Okay. So, what are the principal components? Principal components T would be essentially B multiplied by B and the B are the vectors which are essentially also known as noting. The second way to you know, uh, you know, do this uh, uh, decomposition is you can do the matrix decomposition using support vector uh, method, right? So you can take a B matrix, the B matrix that we have computed and we can do a SVD of that V matrix and we can write that as a product of three matrices U, Sigma and V transpose. Okay, so we are not going to the covariance matrix here. In this, we are working essentially with the B matrix itself. And we are doing the support vector decomposition of the B matrix. Okay, now once we have done the support vector decomposition of B matrix, we can write the pre principal component T as a product of just the first two matrices, U and Sigma. If I take the U and Sigma, that also is another way of doing the principal component decomposition. So what I mentioned, T is essentially the transformation matrix that transforms the data from X1 and X2 axis to U and V axis, right? You can find it using this, but you can also find out that transformation matrix by just doing the support vector decomposition and just taking the first two matrix and remove, throw away V transpose, just use the product of U and Sigma and that will give you a resultant matrix because U is a matrix, Sigma is a matrix, multiplication of this will be a matrix, right? So this T will be the matrix that does that transformation and that's another way to implement principal component using the support vector decomposition. So now let's, you know, what we can do is we can take example problems and we can see how these two different approaches that we have, okay? Okay, so you know, one of the primary methods which is used for principal component is, you know, essentially using the support vector decomposition idea that we have here. Okay, so let's take, you know, you know, same example problem that we have been carrying, the matrix that we are using is same because we have done the SVD of this matrix previously in the SVD portion of this lecture. So we know what is the support vector decomposition of this matrix. So we will use that information to, you know, do the principal component analysis and doing the dimensionality reduction. Now, if you look into this data points, there are three data points, right? And it has two dimensions, right? X1, X2. And what we want to do is we want to possibly represent that by a one single dimension. So what we want to do is we want to transform this and hopefully write this as X, where we don't need two dimension, we just need only one column and three entries corresponding to three data points, right? This is the dimensionality reduction probably we want to do and that's the problem of interest that we have. So question is how do we do that? Let's see two different approaches that could be used to do this. Okay. Again, we are um, directly computing X instead of using the mean centered, right? You can do the mean centered approach and do that, but this one is a simple matrix and you know, they are on the same scale. So the mean centering is not going to help much. So we can do the computations, all the computations that have stepped through uh, onwards and so on directly on X. So that's what we are going to be doing, right? So if we will move on directly to the computation of the covariance matrix X rather than going through the mean centering process. But you can go ahead and do the mean centering and you will arrive at exactly the same, same results, okay? So what we do, we have X, so we will take the, what is the covariance matrix? X transpose X, what we will, uh, that will be there. So we'll do this, so C will be, see this is X, so the X transpose is going to be this, and then X is going to be this. So we'll take the multiplication of these two matrices, and from there, the C is come, going to be come out to be this matrix, which is 6, 3, 3, 6, right? Those are the two rows of C matrix. And then what we can do is we can essentially, you know, uh, do, the eigenvalue decomposition of this matrix that we have, C matrix that we have. So if you take the C matrix and we solve the eigenvalue problem of this matrix that we have talked in previous lectures, right? And what we will get is like there will be, you know, essentially two different eigenvalues, lambda 1, lambda 2, 9, and 3, okay? Corresponding to this, there will be eigenvectors 1, 1, and then minus 1 and 1, okay? So what we can do is we can then take a normalized eigen vector. So this is not normalized, it has to be unit vectors. So you can do the normalization. And if you do this normalization, we will get from this, you know, one square plus one square divided, and then they will take one and divide that by two, and the square root of two, you will get this normalized eigen vector. So we are normalizing this. Similarly, we will normalize V2, two, 
and if you normalize that V2, we will get this eigenvector. So these are the eigen uh, normalized eigenvector associated with eigenvalues lambda 1 equal to 9 and lambda 2 equal to 3 that we have. And again, eigenvectors are scale in, in the independent and so on. So to avoid variation, it is a standard practice to use L2 norm and normalize the eigenvectors that is there. Okay. So from that information, now we can write the principal component analysis. So what we need to do is we need to find out the transformation vector, right, transformation matrix, which is x times v. And how do we do that? What is x? x is the original data set, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, minus 1. And then we list down the normalized eigenvector. That's the first eigenvector. That becomes the first column of v matrix. The second eigenvector corresponding to lambda 2 becomes the second column of this matrix. And then when we have got this matrix and we multiply that, that will give me the transformation matrix that is of, of interest to us. Okay? So when you multiply this together, the transformed coordinate of the matrix, you know, the original data point, this data points are going to be this column and this column. So if you multiply this together, you will get this. And this is essentially the transformed coordinates. So this is in x1 and x2 space. And these are the coordinates of the data points in u and v space. So that's one thing that you can do. So you can see how we have got from x1 and x2 space to u and v space using this multiplication approach that we have. But are we interested in just this? No, we are also interested in further reducing the dimensionality. So what we are going to do is in this transformed space, the data point has two coordinates, right? The first coordinate, the data point one has this u coordinate. This is the u coordinate that you have. And this is the v coordinate that you have, right? But we see, if you want to do dimensionality reduction, maybe from you know the first, the second coordinate system or the second data point is not that important. So we, what we can do is we can essentially throw this away, and we can simplify, and we can write the t just as you know, where we have this entry is three by root two, three by root two and zero. Those are the transformed coordinates. So we took this data point and transformed to this, and that becomes you know, dimensionality reduction. So now we move from two dimension to a single dimension, and the three data points which needed two coordinate here, only needs a single coordinate in this system, and so on. This is how we do dimensionality reduction in general. Okay, so this is the first principal component. This is the second principal component. And what I'm saying, even we are doing the dimensionality reduction, we throw away probably the higher or higher principal components that are there in the data set and that helps us in doing the dimensionality reduction. So if that's the case, from the T, what we can do is we can now throw away the higher principal components and then keep the lower principal component. For example, in this case, only the first principal component and throw away the second principal component. And that is the way we can approach the dimensionality reduction. So again, from this X, which is, again, with the example, this is probably in x1 and x2 space. Now, through this operation, when we arrived at t, these are the coordinate in, you know, u and v space, okay, where we have the component, but we can throw away probably the v space, and that is the idea behind dimensionality reduction. So if you want to do that, we can represent just t as this. And so each data point now is represented by a single coordinate in U axis. And from two dimension, we have now reduced it to a single dimension. So this is the idea behind dimensional reduction through principal component analysis. And if you use this, now in your machine learning pipeline, you will have a very efficient processing because it's lower dimension. Just for illustrative example, again, reducing something from two dimension to one dimension is not drastic, but if you see the image example, the n could be thousands more than thousand. You know, sometimes like if you have 120 by 120 images, the number of uh, dimension that n can have is 43,200. Now from there, you can reduce from 43,200 to maybe a 100 dimensional space, and that is a considerable reduction in the number of dimensions that you want to do, and that can significantly help you in learning you know, good things, a so classifier and so on, and that's the main reason why we want to do, because the real data set might have a very high dimensionality. Okay? And in that sense, when we transform that and reduce the dimensionality and work with the reduced dimensionality coordinates of the data point, you know, the performance and the you know, the workings of the machine learning 
uh, are much better than what you can get in the higher dimensional space that you have. So this is how we can do the dimensionality reduction using you know, the eigenvalue decomposition problem.